There are a lot of flags with mythical creatures or animals. But among all, I think the cutest is this one. Do you know which country it is? Yes, it's Zimbabwe. Why they put this bird on their flag? Let's find out the answer with me in this episode. Hi everyone, this is Chihiro and you're watching African Arts at Africa Center Hong Kong. Today we're going to talk about Great Zimbabwe. Great Zimbabwe is the largest stone settlement ruin in sub-Saharan Africa and consists of 150 major stone ruins scattered across Zimbabwe and Mozambique. Actually, the name of the country Zimbabwe originated from this heritage. It came from a Shona word, Mad Zimbabwe, meaning big house of stone. It is truly a big house of stone for its unscalable stone walls that reaches nearly 10 meters and run for a length of about 250 meters. It almost looked like I'm playing a game. The Great Zimbabwe was defined by three main areas, the hill complex, the Great Enclosure and the Valley Complex. Let me explain one by one. The Hill Complex. It is where the king lived with abundant rain, good soil, a nearby river, the absence of malaria and protection and defense afforded by isolated peaks. It makes this site well suited for the center of Ashona Kingdom. Six of eight carvings of soap stones were found in this area and it is suggested that the birds may have represented the ancestors of the great Zimbabwe's rulers. Great Enclosure it is reserved for members of the royal family. One king is known to have more than 200 wives and the families had to pay the labola, which is bride price. Having many wives was a clear indication of the king's wealth. The valley complex, where the village leader and the families live. This area also served as a hub for commercial exchange and long distance trade. Archaeologists have found porcelain fragments originating in China, Bees crafted in Southeast Asia and ingots from trading centers along the Zambezi River and the Central African Kingdom. Great Zimbabwe thrived during 11th to 15th century. There were around 18,000 people at its highest point, which equals to the population of Rome at the same time. There is so much in this great kingdom called Great Zimbabwe, but why not everyone knows about this? There is a reason. The hypothesis set in the late 19th century about Great Zimbabwe was so wrong and racist. Uh, from a scientific standpoint, it is an object lesson. Great Zimbabwe is probably the most abused archaeological site in the world and has been subject to more um, clearly uh, incorrect speculation. Uh, and also physical destruction by uh, colonialists working at the site uh, early in this century. In 1860s, a German explorer, Karl Mauch, concluded that the structures of Great Zimbabwe were built to replicate the palace of the Queen Sheba in Jerusalem. The Sheba legend, as promoted by Mauch, became so pervasive in the white settler community, which later turned out to be wrong. In 1890s, with Cecil Rhodes' funding, Sir James Theodore Bent undertook the research of Great Zimbabwe. He stated in his book that the builders of temples were either the Phoenicians or the Arabs, because the conical tower of the Great Enclosure kind of looked like a temple drawn on Phoenician coins. After Bent, a Rhodesian journalist called Richard Nickling Ho took over the research. Research. He tried so hard to find the signs for its white builders. It resulted in discarding from 3 to 12 feet of stratified archaeological deposits throughout Great Zimbabwe. An archaeologist who visited the site shortly after Hall left described his fieldwork reckless blundering. Unfortunately, under the white minority rule, these false hypotheses that support the legitimacy of the colonial power were taken without second thought. The official line in Rhodesia during the 1960s and 1970s was that the structures were built by non-black and archaeologists who disputed the official statement were censored by the government. According to Paul Sinclair, who was an archaeologist stationed at Great Zimbabwe, he says, I was told by the then director of the museums and monuments organizations to be extremely careful about talking to the press about the origins of the Great Zimbabwe state. Once a member of the Museum Board of Trustees threatened me with losing my job if I said publicly that blacks had built Zimbabwe. He said it was okay to say that yellow people had built it, but I wasn't allowed to mention radiocarbon date. But thanks to the researchers like David Randall Mashiva and Gertrude Cotton Thompson, 
the Bantu origin theory was confirmed in the beginning of 20th century. Alright, I got too much into the history this time, but let's look at the art. This bird that was engraved in a soapstone became an icon of today's Zimbabwe. It is used on the flag, banknotes, coins, and monuments. There are over 100 organizations that incorporate birds with their logos. This bird is said to be a representation of either Batila eagle or African fish eagle. One explanation of the symbolic meaning of the bird is to re represent a new king. Another more probable explanation is that Zimbabwean birds represent the sacred or totemic animals of the Shona. Batila eagle, Chapungu, which was held to be a messenger from Muari, which means God, and their ancestors. Official eagle, Hungwe, which it has been suggested as the original totem of the Shona. It is so sad that not many of us know about this fascinating culture or about fascinating people just because the early researchers were racist. I'm sure there are still much more that are supposed to be talked about in African history. I hope we can learn bit by bit in this series. Please let me know if you have any question, comment or things that you want me to cover. Thank you for watching and see you next week.